we got a, a mostly fans question from Underdog user by the name of Cash Me Out. <laughs> 89. Damn. <laughs> so, later in your career, was there a player or a situation that got the best of you where you said it might be time for me to hang him up? So, Gil, I'll start with you. Yep. Yeah. Who? <laughs> cool. Elaborate. Because I, I don't know that doctor's name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that doctor's name because he, he, he told me you would never be the same player again. So you need to adjust your game. Mm. Yeah. The fuck does that mean? Mm -hmm. Right? You know, that, that was my thought process. And trust me, when you're going into the game and you see a lane open and I'm a one foot jumper and now I got to go in there and try to jump off two, right? And I'm not a two foot jumper that can dunk, right? The game changes. And um, I remember when I was in Memphis, right? I, I think this is something that people for the naysayers, right? I think people think I got blackballed, right? And not realize I got in trouble in Washington. I played in Orlando. I played in Washington after Orlando and then Memphis. So it's not a blackball. What ended up happening is I'm, I'm going to the gym early and I have uh, Jeremy Pargo and um, Josh Shelby as the rooks, right? And I'm training them, working them out, right? Anything I said, they listened, they did. But Hollins didn't fuck with young guys, only vets. So I wasn't better than them, not even close, right? These dudes was, they was the future, mm -hmm. right? Future guards, you can see it oozing, their work ethic oozing. And they're putting me in the game, right? Putting me in the game. And I said <clears throat> right then and right there that I don't have the love that I used to have for this game, and these dudes do, and as long as I'm on this team, <coughs> I'm gonna be in their way. Mm -hmm. So that was the day I was like, I'm done. I made enough money in my life, right? I don't have the love, let somebody, let me remove myself. There's, now there's only 449 people. So somebody who, who's, who's looking to do what I did has a chance. Because as long as I say I want to be on a team, any veteran coach would have put me on the team mm -hmm. as a backup or a backup yeah. backup. And this is when you were with the Grizzlies. This is with the Grizzlies. So after that day, I never, I never answered another call to come back. Mm. Like if you look at it, 2013, when Doc was a coach with the Clippers, um, you know, he invited me to training camp. I didn't show up. I'm good because whoever, whoever you're going to cut to put me on the team, he probably has more love than I do right now. And I respect the game too much to just be sitting on the bench collecting a check. Mm. I mean, you say that. I go so, take these. I, I go take a lot of people who I go take that. this Asian money. <laughs> <laughs> girl, I wanted to say on something. You say, you say uh, that that player has more love than you, but isn't it love for you to be able to acknowledge that you're not the same player that you are anymore to give somebody else an opportunity? Yeah, yeah no, that's just the respect and like the. The, the game I fell in love with. Like, I understand, like, fans, and, but they don't understand, like, I was a fan first. And I was just a fan who got a chance to live out his dream, right? So when I'm in the NBA, I was a fanboy, right? Everybody, I'm, okay, okay, let me get your jersey. Sign your autograph. Like, I, I, I collected 550 goddamn jerseys while I was a player because I was a fan who was playing. Right? I just had a skill and I was great at that skill. So when I felt like I don't have the same love planning no more, let me go ahead and give someone who was, you know, at the end of the bench, number 15. You know I, mean? I got to think about how I started. I thought I started as a number 15 player, right? Right? Now imagine if that veteran was in front of me, I would have never got my shot. I don't want to be that dude. So I, I opened up spots. So, Kenya, was there a, a, a player situation in your career that got the best of you where you just thought it might be time to shut it down? Oh, no, my shoe was the same, just injury, man. For all the time, fucking injury. Um, the, the game, the way I played, shit, nah, I don't, nobody, nah, I ain't, I ain't gonna give nobody that, that kind of credit. Nah, ain't no, yeah, it's, yeah, just time. Yeah, really just time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you play enough, you play a certain way, the 
work a certain way, then yeah, it's shit. <laughs> Back then, yeah, it's surgeries and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Like, I, so did you adjust with yours over time because you was injured? I didn't know how. Mm. I still just went. Like I mean, like mentally. I, like, yeah, yeah, mentally. Like, yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah. So but I just for me, you, like, I wouldn't. I, I just didn't start shooting a whole lot of jump shots and certain things like that. No, I, I just. Yeah, no, nah, I, I just went. Yeah, but mentally, I knew like certain situations, like there, especially when I went to Milwaukee, like there, you know what? Yeah, we, it was on the break, and I went up, like you said, that one foot jump, and I was like, oh, <laughs> fucking needing. I was like, yeah, this don't feel right. Mm -hmm. But uh, and and I and that was just from like time, like it was it was that. And I was like, nah, yeah, this. But then you sit around, you like, damn, maybe I still can. But then nah, you realize, mm -hmm. like. And then, uh, yeah, it's just that, and for me to go to Milwaukee, it took everybody around me in my inner circle to get me to go. Because I, I had mentally checked out. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, like, checked all the way fucking out. <laughs> Sitting at home, family, kid, I was, you know, the phone rang and everybody around me. I, I, I literally held the phone, was like, just listening to the conversation like this. And she, and she was like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's that. Then, you know, I'll go, I put everything aside, like, you know what, I'm gonna go give it a, and then the shit don't work. And I, yo, they could have called me and like, yo, we changed our mind. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I was on the next thing, smoking home, man. Yeah. So, Lexi, obviously you're still hooping, still young, vibrant, out here really in these streets getting it, putting in <laughs> work in the gym. I'm just saying, still young, been able to I'm be on the, the streets, move. Guys. In your city, out these streets, Let me clear that out. Streets, clear that up. Streets, Not in the, the streets. Gym. But I'm just Mostly saying, in the gym. you're young, on the streets, on the way to the gym. <laughs> wasn't there 5.30 in the morning. But 5.45. No, she wasn't. Doesn't matter. She's still I, putting no, in the work. You know, because she's, she's, she's comp at this point, right? Oh, I for sure. At 5.30, are you in the gym? Because <laughs> I am. did message me at 5.30 talking about, are you, did you get your shots up? I was on my way to Pilates, so I was so stretching. You were putting out. in the work, but my point, you dealt, you dealt with some situation this past season. How has that just changed your mentality and approach and just maybe even just in appreciating the game? a little more and understanding how it could be taken away from me. Oh, yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is the way I take care of my body, which I was, since I've been young, I've just always been very healthy, no injuries, knock on wood. Um, and I just love being in the gym and working out. So if, if I feel a little soreness, a little tired, I'm like, let me just go work it out. I'm going to go to the gym, work out, work out. Um, but this summer, when I got really sick, um, you know, you can be the healthiest person in the world mm -hmm. and like you have no control over certain things. So um, I had to really sit down and just be like, I need to just take care of my body better, like internally, like the physical, like the lifting, the running, the, all that, like I got that handled. But like what I eat, my diet, massages, stretching, um, drinking, like those things, like catch yeah. up to you, catch up to you. and. I mean, my doctor said nothing I did, <laughs> nothing I did caused, you know, me getting sick. Like, it just was something that happens to some people. No. Um, but yeah, moving forward, like, I'm going to get to the gym a little earlier. I'm going to be more mindful of my morning routines. Um, try to stay off the phone, just mentally, like, just everything has just changed. And I do have a new gratefulness for the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still am obsessed and I love basketball. Like, that never changed, but like, it's just a little bit different now. Yeah. And now I'm like a vet vet. Like, last year I was like kind of like a baby vet, but like now I'm like a real vet. So I'm excited to go into this season and, you know, help the rookie. Well, we have two lottery picks, so help them out. Um, wrap my arms around our younger players that are, you know, still learning. Um, but. I'm like, yo, I'm not ready to get out of anybody's way yet. <laughs> so I'm just excited. WNBA season quickly approaching. Uh, we are excited to be hitting you up for tickets uh, mm -hmm. to games. Hopefully you will answer your phone. Always. Okay, no switch ups. No switch up. <laughs> I need 10. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> like you going home. <laughs> I'm bringing the whole crew out here. I got to bring no, everybody.